April 14. David kills Goliath. Don't worry about this Philistine, David told Saul. I'll go fight him. Don't be ridiculous, Saul replied. There's no way you can fight this Philistine and possibly win. You're only a boy, and he's been a man of war since his youth. But David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too, for he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. Saul finally consented. All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. Then Saul gave David his own armor, a bronze helmet and a coat of mail. David put it on, strapped the sword over it, and took a step or two to see what it was like, for he had never worn such things before. I can't go in these, he protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. So David took them off again. He picked up five smooth stones from a stream and put them into a shepherd's bag. Then, armed only with his shepherd's staff and sling, he started across the valley to fight the Philistine. Goliath walked out toward David with his shield-bearer ahead of him, sneering in contempt at this ruddy-faced boy. "'Am I a dog?' he roared at David. "'That you come at me with a stick?' And he cursed David by the names of his gods. "'Come over here, and I'll give your flesh to the birds and wild animals,' Goliath yelled." David replied to the Philistine, You come to me with sword, spear, and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of heaven's armies, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Today the Lord will conquer you, and I will kill you and cut off your head, and then I will give the dead bodies of your men to the birds and wild animals, and the whole world will know that there is a God in Israel. And everyone assembled here will know that the Lord rescues his people, but not with sword and spear. This is the Lord's battle, and he will give you to us. As Goliath moved closer to attack, David quickly ran out to meet him. Reaching into his shepherd's bag and taking out a stone, he hurled it with his sling and hit the Philistine in the forehead. The stone sank in, and Goliath stumbled and fell face down on the ground. So David triumphed over the Philistine with only a sling and a stone, for he had no sword. Then David ran over and pulled Goliath's sword from its sheath. David used it to kill him and cut off his head. Israel routs the Philistines. When the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, they turned and ran. Then the men of Israel and Judah gave a great shout of triumph and rushed after the Philistines, chasing them as far as Gath and the gates of Ekron. The bodies of the dead and wounded Philistines were strewn all along the road, from Shearim as far as Gath and Ekron. Then the Israelite army returned and plundered the deserted Philistine camp. David took the Philistines' head to Jerusalem, but he stored the man's armor in his own tent. As Saul watched David go out to fight the Philistine, he asked Abner, the commander of his army, Abner, whose son is this young man? I really don't know, Abner declared. Well, find out who he is, the king told him. As soon as David returned from killing Goliath, Abner brought him to Saul with the Philistine's head still in his hand. Tell me about your father, young man, Saul said. And David replied, His name is Jesse, and we live in Bethlehem. Saul becomes jealous of David. After David had finished talking with Saul, he met Jonathan, the king's son. There was an immediate bond between them, for Jonathan loved David. From that day on, Saul kept David with him and wouldn't let him return home. And Jonathan made a solemn pact with David because he loved him as he loved himself. Jonathan sealed the pact by taking off his robe and giving it to David, together with his tunic, sword, bow, and belt. Whatever Saul asked David to do, David did it successfully. So Saul made him a commander over the men of war, an appointment that was welcomed by the people and Saul's officers alike. When the victorious Israelite army was returning home after David had killed the Philistine, women from all the towns of Israel came out to meet King Saul. They sang and danced for joy with tambourines and cymbals. This was their song. Saul has killed his thousands and David his ten thousands. 
This made Saul very angry. What's this? He said. They credit David with ten thousands and me with only thousands. Next, they'll be making him their king. So from that time on, Saul kept a jealous eye on David. The very next day, a tormenting spirit from God overwhelmed Saul, and he began to rave in his house like a madman. David was playing the harp as he did each day. But Saul had a spear in his hand, and he suddenly hurled it at David, intending to pin him to the wall. But David escaped him twice. Saul was then afraid of David, for the Lord was with David and had turned away from Saul. Finally, Saul sent him away and appointed him commander over 1,000 men, and David faithfully led his troops into battle. David continued to succeed in everything he did, for the Lord was with him. When Saul recognized this, he became even more afraid of him. But all Israel and Judah loved David because he was so successful at leading his troops into battle. David marries Saul's daughter. One day Saul said to David, I am ready to give you my older daughter, Mirab, as your wife. But first you must prove yourself to be a real warrior by fighting the Lord's battles. For Saul thought, I'll send him out against the Philistines and let them kill him rather than doing it myself. Who am I and what is my family in Israel that I should be the king's son-in-law? David exclaimed. My father's family is nothing. So when the time came for Saul to give his daughter Mirab in marriage to David, he gave her instead to Adriel, a man from Mahola. In the meantime, Saul's daughter, Michael, had fallen in love with David, and Saul was delighted when he heard about it. Here's another chance to see him killed by the Philistines, Saul said to himself. But to David, he said, today you have a second chance to become my son-in-law. Then Saul told his men to say to David, the king really likes you, and so do we. Why don't you accept the king's offer and become his son-in-law? When Saul's men said these things to David, he replied, How can a poor man from a humble family afford the bride price for the daughter of a king? When Saul's men reported this back to the king, he told them, Tell David that all I want for the bride price is one hundred Philistine foreskins. Vengeance on my enemies is all I really want. But what Saul had in mind was that David would be killed in the fight. David was delighted to accept the offer. Before the time limit expired, he and his men went out and killed 200 Philistines. Then David fulfilled the king's requirement by presenting all their foreskins to him. So Saul gave his daughter Michael to David to be his wife. When Saul realized that the Lord was with David and how much his daughter Michael loved him, Saul became even more afraid of him, and he remained David's enemy for the rest of his life. Every time the commanders of the Philistines attacked, David was more successful against them than all the rest of Saul's officers. So David's name became very famous. Saul tries to kill David. Saul now urged his servants and his son Jonathan to assassinate David. But Jonathan, because of his strong affection for David, told him what his father was planning. Tomorrow morning, He warned him, you must find a hiding place out in the fields. I'll ask my father to go out there with me, and I'll talk to him about you. Then I'll tell you everything I can find out. The next morning, Jonathan spoke with his father about David, saying many good things about him. The king must not sin against his servant David, Jonathan said. He's never done anything to harm you. He has always helped you in any way he could. Have you forgotten about the time he risked his life to kill a Philistine giant and how the Lord brought a great victory to all Israel as a result? You were certainly happy about it then. Why should you murder an innocent man like David? There is no reason for it at all. So Saul listened to Jonathan and vowed, As surely as the Lord lives, David will not be killed. Afterward, Jonathan called David and told him what had happened. Then he brought David to Saul, and David served in the court as before. War broke out again after that, and David led his troops against the Philistines. He attacked them with such fury that they all ran away. But one day when Saul was sitting at home with spear in hand, the tormenting spirit from the Lord suddenly came upon him again. As David played his harp, Saul hurled his spear at David, but David dodged out of the way. And leaving the spear stuck in the wall, he fled and escaped into the night. Michael saves David's life. Then Saul sent troops to watch David's house. They were told to kill David when he came out the next morning. But Michael, David's wife, warned him, If you don't escape tonight, you will be dead by morning. So she helped him climb out through a window, and he fled and escaped. 
Then she took an idol and put it in his bed, covered it with blankets, and put a cushion of goat's hair at its head. When the troops came to arrest David, she told them he was sick and couldn't get out of bed. But Saul sent the troops back to get David. He ordered, Bring him to me in his bed so I can kill him. But when they came to carry David out, they discovered that it was only an idol in the bed with a cushion of goat's hair at its head. Why have you betrayed me like this and let my enemy escape? Saul demanded of Michael. I had to, Michael replied. He threatened to kill me if I didn't help him. Rescue me from my enemies, O God. Protect me from those who have come to destroy me. Rescue me from these criminals. Save me from these murderers. They have set an ambush for me. Fierce enemies are out there waiting, Lord, though I have not sinned or offended them. I have done nothing wrong, yet they prepare to attack me. Wake up, see what is happening, and help me. O Lord God of heaven's armies, the God of Israel, wake up and punish those hostile nations. Show no mercy to wicked traitors. They come out at night, snarling like vicious dogs as they prowl the streets. Listen to the filth that comes from their mouths, their words cut like swords. After all, who can hear us, they sneer. But, Lord, you laugh at them. You scoff at all the hostile nations. You are my strength. I wait for you to rescue me, for you, O God, are my fortress. In his unfailing love, my God will stand with me. He will let me look down in triumph on all my enemies. Don't kill them, for my people soon forget such lessons. Stagger them with your power and bring them to their knees, O Lord, our shield. Because of the sinful things they say, because of the evil that is on their lips, let them be captured by their pride, their curses, and their lies. Destroy them in your anger. Wipe them out completely. Then the whole world will know that God reigns in Israel. My enemies come out at night, snarling like vicious dogs as they prowl the streets. They scavenge for food, but go to sleep unsatisfied. But as for me, I will sing about your power. Each morning I will sing with joy about your unfailing love. For you have been my refuge, a place of safety, when I am in distress. O oh, my strength, to you I sing praises, for you, O oh God, are my refuge, the God who shows me unfailing love. David escapes to Ramah. So David escaped and went to Ramah to see Samuel, and he told him all that Saul had done to him. Then Samuel took David with him to live in Naoth. When the report reached Saul that David was at Naoth in Ramah, he sent troops to capture him. But when they arrived and saw Samuel leading a group of prophets who were prophesying, the Spirit of God came upon Saul's men, and they also began to prophesy. When Saul heard what had happened, he sent other troops, but they too prophesied. The same thing happened a third time. Finally, Saul himself went to Ramah and arrived at the great well in Siku. Where are Samuel and David? he demanded. They are at Naoth in Ramah, someone told him. But on the way to Naoth in Ramah, the Spirit of God came even upon Saul, and he too began to prophesy all the way to Naoth. He tore off his clothes and lay naked on the ground all day and all night, prophesying in the presence of Samuel. The people who were watching exclaimed, What? Is even Saul a prophet? 